Okay, so I just want to elaborate on the best antivirus you can find on Linux. And so there's like a good bit of antivirus that you can find. You've got ClamAV, that's a popular one. They do have a Windows counterpart, Win, ClamWin antivirus. Um, you've got, I think, is that Bitdefender? Yeah. Libre Defender. So those are kind of your main options. But really kind of your best antivirus is common sense. <laughs> Just like being smart about it. Um, on Linux, for the, like if you're worrying about viruses, that's because you are downloading programs and stuff from wherever. And you haven't quite picked up on like the best practices for, oh, software acquisition. So, basically, the common sense answer is just get programs and stuff from sources you trust, from trusted sources. And this also applies to, like, Windows as, <coughs> Windows as well, which greatly minimizes your virus, oh, count because what happens is you get some random program from some random torrent or whatever that came from pirate bay you install it and all of a sudden you've got a virus or it detects it as a virus or what have you and really what you should be doing is just verifying the sources you're getting from so for example you in Linux, all you ha you do is you install <clears throat> programs from official repos. So if you're like you're using Arch or Artix, you go from the official repos. And I would think that most people that are maintaining packages and the various distro repos are pretty good at making sure that like the software is virus free. Like even back when. Google was sneaking um, Google binaries into Chromium. People reported that Chromium was downloading extra stuff that wasn't in the repos and that was closed source. And then Chromium immediately got pulled from the Debian repositories because of it. It became a big debacle all over the place. And so since then, Google has kind of like not done that. In fact, they've removed a lot of the Google stuff from base chromium and have left it to be put in chrome after they go through their rebranding on it so it's things like that when you've got really good package maintainers that are able to make sure hey this isn't a virus so what happens <clears throat> if say you're installing from like source or something maybe come on but there we go. You get something from GitHub. <clears throat> and where is it? Let's go with... Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So you get something, some sort of software that you're like, uh... For the most part, open source software, free software is going to let you see the source code so you can like vet and audit it if you've got the ability. And then a lot of times you can look through the change logs and it'll like specify different things that <coughs> about it. And there are people that will bring up issues and things in it that you can sift through to see if there are any issues with it. But for the most part, it's kind of hard to sneak something like really sketchy into open source software because it's pretty open and everyone can see it. And there are a bunch of people contributing to it. You can see the different pull requests and why some were rejected and otherwise. So again, it comes down to getting from trusted sources. So like if you're installing something, you can, you may, it may not be in your repos, but it would be source-based. And so by installing from source, you're basically Again, you're able to vet and verify that it's a trusted source. And when you're in 
a lot of times when you're in like, come on. So in the case of arch-based distros, you go into the AUR and it's like, okay, if you want to verify a package, you can go and look at it and be like, okay, um, I was looking at this package and it'll have like this upstream URL, which basically goes to the source pay the source repo or the home page of the software. And again, you can verify what it is, what it does, and everything else in the same fashion. And that gives you kind of that assurity that what you're getting is free of problems. And again, it mitigates those viruses because you're using common sense to download from trusted places. So... The other one is like for software that isn't in the repos or your playing games. It's like everyone knows like their trusted video games and those sources like Steam and whatnot and GOG and things like that. So for the mo pretty much for the most part, like they're verifying that the games aren't doing any harm to your system. But on top of that, oh, you don't really have any moment, like, I don't really worry about viruses when I'm, like, installing my games from GOG or Steam or whatnot, because I trust that they vetted through the, the software already. But it's also shown a track record that it's been really good at not having those problems. There are other issues with, like, Oh, telemetry and things that people talk about. But if you're trying to mitigate the viruses itself, then for the most part, you're generally fine just going with these guys if you're just like purely against viruses. But spyware or things like spyware, then those people might have issues. So, yeah, basically the best antivirus you can get on Linux is your own common sense. Use your head, install from trusted sources. You know where they are. There, there are certain places that you trust. Those fishy links in your email or those audit torrents, you've got to be careful with. That's when you need to have an antivirus to scan it is if you're really, really wanting to download it. And so you've got to scan it before you even do anything to run it. And that's basically what I do. If I get a package or something from a source I don't trust, I'm generally scanning it. And usually that only happens on Windows. So I will verify, like, whatever Windows program I get is free of viruses by scanning it for viruses. And then after that, it's like, okay, doesn't look like it has anything. I think I'm fine. Other than that, on Linux... I basically install from the repos or I install software or from trusted places like the game distributors or I'm installing from source basically and compiling it myself. So yeah, if you found this helpful, if you're looking for like what kind of antivirus is there, like I guess you can go with Libre Defender or Clam AV, but uh, basically it's like I really don't see a need for it. So yeah. Um... You can comment and feed the algorithm about, like, why I'm wrong and things like that. Or you can check out the chat links and stuff that are going to be in the description. And I'll see you guys later.